Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Crash Test Games. My name is Christian and I'll be your host today. Now today we're going to do something a little bit different than what you're used to seeing on my channel. Um, we are going to go through some covert ops type tactics. Um, and we're going to go through one of the most dangerous spaces that I know of, which is called Ransor. Um, it is a low sec system which is constantly guarded by smart bombs, pirates, and other thieves that just can't wait for a nice ju juicy hauler to come through. Now I'm going to be transporting only about 150 million worth of goods um, from the Abyss. Um, you guys have seen me run a few of those um, and we just need a little bit of money at this point. Um, I only have about 150 cubic meters of space in this ship, um, but this is the Pacifier and it is the Concorde Covert Ops Frigate. Um, the requirements to be able to fly this ship um, include but are not limited to, let's pull it up here for, for a second. Um, at least level one of all four races of um, the frigate skill. Um, spaceship command at least level one. Covert ops at least level one. Electronic upgrades level five. CPU management two. Power grid management two. And spaceship command three. Um, now, in order to fly a covert ops ship and to get this skill trained at all, you do have to have at least one of these four races at level four. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All righty, so our journey is going to begin here in Heck. We are going to travel through several low sec jumps to cut our trip down from instead of 20 plus jumps, we're going to cut it down to 9 jumps. However, like I said, this is some of the most dangerous low sec space that I know of. Um, normally speaking, I don't even risk it, but honestly, it's late at night and I just don't want to, uh, to have a super long um, run today. Alright, so, real fast, getting into some of the specs of this ship. Um, First of all, obviously it can fit the Covert Ops cloaking device too. Um, I do have, I do have the, uh, the the skill for it all maxed out so that it's good to go. Um, it does have two small uh, hyperspatial velocity optimizers and four inertial stabilizers. Now I know what you're thinking: Why on earth would you have these? We'll get into that in just one second. It has an alignment time of 2.61 seconds, which honestly, for a frigate. Um, is kind of slow if you're do doing just a running frigate, um, but you have to keep in mind that this is a, uh, a covert off ship as well, so it can cloak while it's trying to warp. Now here's why I like this ship so much. Its warping speed is at 18.6 AUs per second. So it may not align as fast as other ships, but you can, you can bet that it will get there faster than any other ship in the game. As far as I understand, the next closest would be something like a, um, a cheetah or something, or not not a cheetah, but um, the Minmatar um, interceptors, where they have about a 12 AU a second warp speed. But obviously, this daunts it by a lot. And as far as I understand, that 12 AU a second is with the the, uh, the hyperspatial velocity optimizers. Um, so yeah. So we're going to employ a couple of different tactics tactics to be able to uh, to go through, detect, and move around gate camps so that you don't have to worry about them too much. Um, so first things first, let's go ahead and warp into this next system. <clears throat> Now I'm keeping an eye on my local counter here, um, just because the last thing we want is to be um, in here thinking that nobody's there and there are people actually there. Now first things first, there is a Reaper sitting there. Um, now it looks like it was an abandoned one, but still that's a red flag saying that there might be somebody watching. So from here we're going to go ahead and start initiating our tactics on not getting caught. So I have a warp 2 tag, tag here, 
Um, I like to warp within 70 of the sun, and immediately upon warping, or upon uh, starting to align, I hit my cloaking device and it insta cloaks me, making it very, very difficult to be able to catch me. Warping to the sun here just ensures that um, people aren't going to follow me straight to the gate. Um, warping within 70, most people warp to 100 or to 0. Um, warping to 70 is kind of an odd number for people, so they don't generally um, try to track you at 70. Now we're going to warp to the gate at 70 as well. And hopefully there's not going to be too many people here, so it's just going to kind of waste our, our actual warp time. Alright, looks like there is absolutely nobody here. That's fine. They have a... Oh, there is a Senesis here. Looks like he might just be passing through. Let's keep an eye on him for a second. I'm going to go ahead and align to the gate. Alright, looks like he went through. So we're going to warp to jump. There are six people in local now, including me, so one, one entered. So warp in, uncloak, and jump as soon as possible. The goal is to not be seen. Alright, on the other side, we've got Saintly Warrior over here. Oh, looks like he uh, he warped off. No, nope. yep, he did. But there's another one sitting here. So we're gonna go ahead and initiate the tactic of warping to the sun within 70 kilometers, and immediately start trying to cloak. There we go. And again, the goal is to not be seen and not be followed. There are 12 people in local over here, so we are, you know, kind of, we are in dangerous area, a dangerous area right now, but it's not terrible yet. Um, with any luck, all the pirates that sit around here will have gone to bed, and we're just going to waste all these tactics on, on avoiding people. But, obviously, there are people out here, there's a gate camp here, um, hornets and hobgoblins. So, yeah, yeah, it looks like we're gonna get get a chance to uh, to show how this works, anyways. So let's go ahead and warp to this uh, to this. Oh, how do you even pronounce that? This Fortazar. We'll just call it Fortazar, so that we can align back to Rancer and go ahead and jump through it as soon as we get there, because there's nobody sitting there with a the smart bomb right now. So uncloak, jump through. We may have been seen by that Senesis. And I'm expecting a gate camp on this side. Oh, look at that. There's actually no gate camp. That's right. We're still going to keep our tactic of going in and warping to a star within 70. Oh, there is a Deimos. And that is a PvP ship. We may have been seen, we may not have been seen. We are going to go in and warp within 70 of the star, or this, uh, the Stargate anyways. Um, hopefully we'll get out of here before anybody can figure out where we're at. All right, that Brutix Navy issue is sitting on this gate now, which is fine. I don't think he, okay, he warped, he warped off or something, but I don't think he could um, catch us even if he wanted to. But we're still going to play the safe and just not give him the chance the best we can. Now, the reason for warping to the uh, to the, the star first is that a lot of pirates and gate camps um, will just try to, um, they'll try to bubble or smart bomb from one gate to the next gate. So if you're warping in and they see you come on grid, they um, and it's like a low sec system like this where you don't have necessarily um, bubbles to worry about, um, they will oftentimes immediately turn on their smart bombs at that point. 
so that um, you warp into the smart bomb and most of the time they will kill and pod you before you ever exit warp. Um, if it's a bubble, you, there's a high possibility of getting caught in the bubble at that, at that point. Alright, and there's nobody on this side, um, but there are five people in local, so we're going to um, still keep to this tactic of warping to the sun first, just to make sure that we are going to be safe. Warp drive active. Out of there. And let's go ahead and stick with our tactic of warping to 70 just to watch this gate. Because the last thing you we want to do is get a little bit complacent and think, oh, we're home free. It's happened to me several times. You think you're home free. So you warp straight to the gate, and boom, they're sitting there waiting for you. This time, nobody was waiting for us. Which is alright. I mean, I don't mind people not waiting for us. It just makes it so that um, our little bit of Iskin cargo here is pretty much it, or is pretty well secured, and we don't have to worry too much about it. Alright, as soon as we uh, jump through this gate, we will be home free to go on to Jidda. Now, a tactic that's been coming that's been becoming more and more increasingly popular is high sec ganking. Um, one of the reasons for this is because people stopped started avoiding low sec and everything like that. Um, for obvious reasons, they don't want to be able to be targeted easily. Um, so people have been starting to do high set ganking, including but not limited to using um, destroyers um, to pump out a lot of DPS really quickly, um, especially in systems that are yellow like this, where it just has a 0.5 um, security status, um, so that they can get one or two volleys off before Concord gets to them. Um, and honestly, it's really... It's really scary trying to transport a lot of ISK all at once in a large ship because you don't know if you're going to make it. I personally have been uh, ganked twice now. Luckily my ship was empty so they didn't do their uh, their homework and cargo scan me or anything. Um, but I've been ganked twice now just due to me traveling through these systems in an industrial. Um, so, you know, there, and, and as far as I understand, People are making really good money off of it as well, so uh, that's why I started using this little uh, this little pacifier here um, because you know it doesn't carry a whole ton of cargo, um, but it can carry my more expensive cargo um, and get me there um, really safely, really quickly. Um, if I were to run the 23 jumps, it would take me a total of 15 minutes. Um, versus this, we're only in about 10 minutes. Um, from heck to uh, to Jitta. So, um, I mean, this shaved off about five minutes, but we also had to bounce around between a couple of different gates, and you know, I guess I guess really didn't shave off all that time that much time, um, but it did feel like it shaved off time. Anyway, so to try to avoid getting ganked because I've been hit in anything from a shuttle to a battleship. Um, I just, at this point, will cloak no matter where I'm going if I have anything valuable um, because people will gank you just to gank you as well. Um, I don't know if, if you guys have seen what a pacifier runs. Um, let's go ahead and just pull up the market value on, on a pacifier. Market details. Okay, just here in Jidda. This runs about 170 million per ship, and that's here in Jidda where you can get them for the best price. So really, it's it's in in your best interest to do everything you can to not get ganked, even if you're just running the ship. Alrighty. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, 
this is kind of a, a little bit of a, uh, a covert ops tutorial type video. Um, so if you guys enjoyed it and you want to see see more things like this, like being able to fly covert ops, black ops, whatever the case is, please give give me a comment in the comment section below um, so that I know that you guys are looking for that type of video. Um, and I'll do everything I can to make sure that it happens. Um, so yeah, um, the, the more the more requests that I get about something, the more likely I am to do it. Um, so you know, don't don't be shy in, in letting me know. Um, once again, thank you for watching Crash Test Games, and I hope you'll hit that like, the comment, and the subscribe button. Have a nice day.